Joan Fontaine, Brian Ahern. <laughs> The Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Your host, the director of the star's own theater, Roger Pryor. Good evening, everyone. Your neighborhood good Gulf dealer in the Gulf Oil Companies welcome you to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Tonight, we're privileged to present one of the most beautiful plays and motion pictures of all time, Waterloo Bridge, starring Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern. It's a dramatic love story against a background of thrilling music by Oscar Bradley's Gulf Orchestra with Frank Tours conducting. But first, suppose we hear a brief comment on human nature by our old friend Bud Easton. All right, Bud. You know, folks, a good example of human nature is the way most of us just naturally assume that our automobiles will start off, take us where we're going, and get us back. That is, until some freezing morning when the car won't start. And then the longer you keep stepping on that starter, the shorter your temper gets. So why not take a stitch in time and use that real quick-starting team Gulf Pride motor oil and Gulf no Knox gasoline? Because even on the coldest day in the middle of the winter... It's not too cold for the right grade of Gulf Pride motor oil. No, sir. The instant you step on your starter, free-flowing Gulf Pride helps your motor turn over. Yes, and then even inside those stone-cold cylinders, Gulf No-Knox gasoline fires in a flash and your car is ready to go. And you can be sure, too, that after your motor is warmed up, Gulf Pride motor oil gives you perfect lubrication, and Gulf No-Knox gasoline gives you a smooth, quiet-running motor, not proof performance under all normal driving conditions. So stop at the sign of the Gulf Orange Disc first thing in the morning and get Gulf's quick-starting team, Gulf Pride Motor Oil and Gulf No-Knox Gasoline. That burst of applause, ladies and gentlemen, is for Brian Ahern and Joan Fontaine who are just entering our Gulf Theater stage. They step to the microphone, the house lights dim, and we present Robert E. Sherwood's play, Waterloo Bridge, with Joan Fontaine as Myra Lester and Brian Ahern as Captain Roy Cronin. There's the downbeat for the orchestra, and the play begins. London, 1939. The lights of Waterloo Bridge are hung against a yellow curtain of fog. A chauffeur-driven car pulls out of the slow-moving stream of traffic and noses to the curb. Its passenger is a handsome man in a colonel's uniform, gray-haired, erect, and reserved. The chauffeur turns and speaks. Is this all right, Colonel Cronin? Yes, yes, it's uh, quite all right, Thomas. I'll get out here. Yes, sir. You've a little over an hour before your train leaves, sir. An hour, eh? Uh, how patterns repeat themselves. Yes. I remember another time I was here on Waterloo Bridge. And I was bound for France then, too. That was in 1916, wasn't it, sir? Seventeen. Seventeen in June. Yes. I stood here at the rail. I was a young captain then. The leave almost over. Having a last look at London. It's a fine sight from the bridge on a clear night, sir. Yes, and it was a clear night 22 years ago. 22 years ago. All that time. And yet it was clear as though it were you. Keep moving, please. Keep moving. Oh, sorry, officer. Just stopped for a last look at London. Well, <laughs> been on leave, sir. Yes, yes, going back tomorrow. Uh, well, good luck, sir. Keep moving up ahead there, please. Keep moving. Listen, the sour and desolate thing coming over. There it is again. It's away. Oh, I don't believe it can be. Yes, yes. Is that an air raid warning? I'm afraid it is. Oh, dear, what shall we do? Where shall we go? To the underground station. On your right. Marine. Now, keep your heads. Don't run now. Walk. Oh, dear, my bag. Come on, come on. Is They're coming bad? over. My lucky charm. Little fool, are you tired of life? I've got to have my charm. I've had it for years. It brings me nothing. All right, I'm, I'm ready. All right, come along, come along. I say, can't you walk any faster? Would it, would it be too unmilitary if we were to run? Oh, no. <laughs> On the contrary, I think it'd be a great idea. Well, 
You can stop being frightened now. Yes. It's a wonderful institution, the underground. Thank you for helping me. Oh, no, not at all. I, I, uh, I don't see any of your friends. Oh, perhaps they took another entrance. A cigarette? No, thanks. Oh, no, of course not. I suppose you're still at school, aren't you? School? I? What, am I being funny? <laughs> Look over there. See that poster? That's my school. Madame Olga Kairoa. <laughs> Kirova oh. and a Russian petite ballet. We're at the Tivoli Theatre. Oh, look, you you don't mean to say you're a dancer. Certainly. Our act goes on at ten. Oh, well, um, what do you uh, usually do after the show? Oh, go home, go to bed, read myself to sleep. Haven't you ever heard that reading in bed's bad for the eyes? <laughs> oh, look. Now, now, how about having supper with me at the Candlelight Club? Oh, I couldn't. Madame Kirova doesn't allow us to have social engagements. Oh. I, I, I'll pick you up at the stage door. Oh, no, it's quite impossible. I'll be there at 11. Oh, no, I tell you, it's quite impossible. But, but if you are there, please, please don't let Madame Grover see you. Will this table do, Captain? Uh, yes, thank you, yes. Very nice. Well, what do you think of the place? Oh, I like it. Only... Only what? Well, I, I really shouldn't be here. Suppose Madame Kirova heard about it. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> you know, when I left you this afternoon outside the air raid shelter, I, I, I couldn't remember what you looked like. Not for the life of me. I, I thought, was she pretty? Was she ugly? Well, what was she like? Do you think you remember me now? Uh, I think so. I'm sure I will. For the rest of my life. Really? Oh, to think, if the nations hadn't gone to war, if, if there hadn't been an air raid this afternoon, we, we might never have met. Oh, let's not blame it on the war. War's dreadful. Yes, yes, of course it's dreadful, but it, but it does make you aware of the, the preciousness of life, as you never are in peacetime. It seems to telescope time. It makes your ears so acute that you can hear the minutes, the seconds flying by. It makes it possible for two people to meet to look into each other's eyes and to know in that instant that they're in love. Do you think we're in love? Think? I know we are. But you don't even know my name, nor are yours. <laughs> well, that's easily remedied. <laughs> I'm Roy Cronin, captain in the Rendlesham Fusiliers. My father's a duke, and I have a scar on my left knee from the time I fell out of an apple tree at the age of eight. Oh. <laughs> my name's Myra Lester. I was born in Birmingham. I'm an orphan... And, and why did you climb the apple tree? To get an apple for your first and only rival, my governess. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. I'm too excited to sit still. Let's dance, shall we? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the last dance of the evening. We hope you will enjoy the farewell walk. I'll write to you, Mara. Will you answer me? Of course. And when I get my next leave, we'll come here again. Oh, yes. This will be this will be our place. This is where we shall always recapture this evening. I'll write you the train and the hour that I'll be in. And you must meet me on Waterloo Bridge. I'll step up just as though we'd never met before. And I'll say, oh, pardon me, miss. I believe there's an air raid. May I assist you to the bomb shelter? <laughs> and then you'll say... Darling. Darling, darling, what's the matter? Nothing. It's just the music. Music always makes me cry. Wonderful evening, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you very much. When do you leave for France? Tomorrow evening. Uh, look here. You uh, you do think we'll see each other again, don't you? Perhaps. Well, here's the door. Uh, this uh, where you live? Yes. Uh, well, nothing to do about it, is there? Nothing but to say goodbye. Mm, I suppose so. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mara, dear. Goodbye, Roy. Goodbye. Please, uh, leave me first. All right. Mara, Mara, wait. Yes, Roy? Mara, 
Will you meet me at St. Matthew's Church at 11 tomorrow morning? Yes, but why? Because we're going to get married. Roy, you're crazy. I, I know it. It's a marvelous sensation. But Roy, be sensible. No, no, not, not me. But you hardly know me. Oh, I'll discover you. I'll spend the rest of my life doing it. Oh, Roy, you're only asking me to do it because you feel you've got to live your whole life in 24 hours. We are going hours. to get married. It's you. It's you. It'll never be anybody oh, else. but how do you know you want me when the war, the excitement of the war is forgotten? Oh, not, I never was so sure of anything in my life. The moment you left me, after the air raid, I knew I must find you again, quickly. And now that I find you, I know I must never let you go again. Does, does that answer you? Oh, Roy. Oh, Roy. Is that all you can say to your future husband? No, not all. The expression's old and time-worn and terribly hackneyed. But I love you. Darling, darling. Been. Shopping? Well, Madame Caroba's been looking for you, and your captain phoned twice. Did he? I mm-hmm. wonder why. He had to go to the barracks, and I went on a buying spree. Look! Whose dress is that? Mine. I spent my last penny for it. Are you crazy? Oh, yes, quite. I bought a hat, too. A stunning little hat and gloves and a bag and shoes, everything. There for my wedding. Myra, do you mean it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to be married this morning, Kitty. It's oh, Matthew. Oh, Kitty, I'm so Happy. I, I I can't believe it. Neither can I. Oh, I guess I'm crazy. <laughs> Look, I, I'm crying. <laughs> I've been crying all morning. Oh, my oh, darling, darling, I'm so happy for you. Hey, little bit of clock. If you're going to be at St. Matthew's at 11, you'll have to. I'll answer it. Hello? Yes? Yes, yeah, she's here. Just a minute. Mary, it's your captain calling again. Oh. Hello? Hello, Roy? Yes? When? Oh, that's terrible. Can't they give you just one more day? Oh, of course I'll come. Right away. I love you, too. Oh, what is it? What's happened? His orders have been changed. His train leaves in half an hour. But the wedding? There won't be any wedding. I'm going to see him off. Where? Waterloo Station. But you can't. You won't be back in time for the show. And you know Madame Karova. She'll dismiss you without knowing. I don't care. I've got to go. Myra, please. She'd never forgive you. And jobs are scarce. Don't do it, Myra. Think. I've got to go. Don't you understand? I've got to go because I may never see him again, Kitty. Oh, I may never see him again. <laughs> Our Gulf Theater curtain falls on Act One of Waterloo Bridge and its intermission time. But a very brief intermission, so we've asked a young fellow to say a few brief words about an interesting place where it's cold one minute and hot the next. All right, bud. When winter comes, most of us think that the only reason for changing our motor oil is the cold. We want an oil that's free-flowing, that lets our motors turn over easily at the first burr of the starter. Well, there's something else to worry about, too, and that's the heat. Not the heat outdoors, but the heat inside the engine. Because as soon as your car has been running a while, the temperature inside the cylinders rises almost as high as in summer. And that's why you need Gulf Pride motor oil. For Gulf Pride not only helps give you quick starts when your engine is cold, it also gives you plenty of protection after the engine heats up. In a way, Gulf Pride motor oil does the work of two oils. The same oil does two jobs for you and does them both mighty well. So even if you're already using a winter-grade oil... Why not get the extra protection of Gulf Pride motor oil? Change to Gulf Pride tomorrow at the sign of the orange disc, and you'll link, lick, winter cold, and engine heat both at the same time. And now the curtain of the Gulf Screen Guild Theater is ready to rise on the second act of Waterloo Bridge. Adapted by Charles Taswell and starring Joan Fontaine as Myra Lester and Brian Ahern as Captain Roy Cronin. It's three months later, September 1917. Myra was discharged from the ballet when she returned to the theater after saying goodbye to Roy at Waterloo Station. And Kitty, her roommate, quit her place out of loyalty. 
They're now living in a shabby third-rate rooming house in a cheap neighborhood. Myra's just coming in. Hello, Kitty. Well? What luck? Did you get the job? No. It was filled. I had a hunch it would be. They said they put me on the waiting list. Oh, my. What are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. We can't get jobs in the show. We can't seem to get jobs anywhere. I'm getting scared. I've never been scared before. I don't like it. Look, why don't you write your captain? And tell Roy we're out of work? No, that we're broke, flat broke. Oh, no, I can't do it, Kitty. Maybe I've got a stupid sort of pride about it, but... Oh, let's wait a little longer. Something must turn up. It's got to. All right. Say, there's a letter for you on the table. A letter? Mm Mm-hmm. Kitty, it's from Roy. Well, well, what does he say? Kitty, his mother's coming to London. What? Yes, he wants me to meet her on Thursday, one o'clock, that little tea room just off the Strand. Kitty, just imagine, his mother. What will I do? You'll meet her, of course. Yes, but I wonder, will she like me? See you while you're waiting? No, thank you. I, I'm sure she'll be here any minute. Perhaps you'd like to look at the evening paper. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope she'll like me. She must like me. American troops moving up. I wonder what he's told her about me. Battle rages in Cam- uh, Cambrai sector. What will I say? The first time my back turned to get pneumonia? Kitty. Here. Put this hot water bottle at your feet. Kitty? Hmm? How did your show go tonight? Oh, same as usual. Um, have you written Roy's mother and explained why you didn't wait at the tea room to see her? That you've been sick and bad ever since? No. There's no reason why I should trouble her. If Roy's dead, there's no tie between us. Did you have a good house at the show? Hmm? So, so. Why? You didn't ask me why I went out. I went to the theatre. I thought I'd surprise you. You weren't there. Oh. Well, I... I didn't want to worry you, Myra. I'm not in that show anymore. I've got another job. They told me you were never in that show. How have we been living? What's the difference as long as we live? Where has the money come from, Kitty? Where have you been getting it? Just where you think I've been getting it. Mara, I've tried to keep it from you, but... You well, did it for me. No, I didn't. I'd have done it anyhow. You did it for me to get me food and medicine. I should have died. No, you wouldn't. You think so, but you wouldn't. I want to go on living, and so do you. We're both young, and it's good to live. Oh, Kitty, how could you do it? They are gay. No jobs, no boys who want to marry you. Only men who want to kill a few hours because they know it may be their last. Oh, Kitty. Well, I suppose you think I'm... Oh, no, no. Who am I to judge? Haven't you kept me alive and fed me and sheltered me? Oh, Kitty, Kitty. What's become of us? What are we going to do? Yes, her name is Myra. Call this number and ask if she's got a friend. Well, look up a girl named Myra at the Tivoli Dance Hall. She'll cheer you up. Hello, Myra. The arm 
it brought you luck. No, Gertie. War or peace makes little difference to us. There's a lot of military police about today. You better be careful. Oh, thanks. Well, the train's in. Here they come. Cheerio, Myra. Hello, soldier. Welcome home, soldier. Hello. Welcome home, corporal. Hello, handsome. Myra. Welcome home, Myra. sergeant. Myra. Hello. Myra. 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 Myra, I can't believe it. Oh, Myra. Myra, it is you. It is you. It's really you. Oh, Roy. Here, here, let me look at you. Oh, I'm not dreaming, am I? Oh, oh, to think of finding you, waiting for me. What? Why, it's a miracle. Oh, Roy, Roy. I'm alive. Yes, yes, I'm extravagantly alive. Oh, the months I've waited for this moment. To th- I began to think it would never come. How did you know I was coming? Did you telephone to Mother? No, no, darling. None of, oh, none of that now. Oh, right. It's over, darling. It's all over. It's all over. We're together. But they said I read in the paper. Didn't you know I was indestructible? Why, how could I die when you were waiting for me to come back? I'd been in a prison camp for the best part of a year. Head wound. Nearly passed out. That's why I couldn't write to you. But now everything's all right. Oh, yes, yes. Everything's all right. Oh, I've, I've got a thousand questions to ask you. What have you been up to? Are you still dancing? Oh, right. Oh, Roy. Darling, have, have things been terribly bad? Oh, very bad. And I wasn't here to help you. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. But I'll make it up to you. Why, you're, you're never going to cry again. Except with happiness. Oh, if only I'd known you were alive. For sure in the world. I'll never leave you again, Mara. Never. No, my darling. Now, now, then, Miss Lester, I have a program. I'm a man of action. I'm going to telephone Mother that we'll both be up to the country on the evening train. <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll be married at St. Matthew's Church. Roy, no. Darling, what is it? You, you, you're not giving me the sack, are you? There isn't someone else. Oh, no, Roy. There isn't anyone else. There couldn't be. Mother. I've never loved anyone else. I never shall. That's the truth, Roy. That's all I want to know. <laughs> now, come on, darling. Come along. We're going to do some shopping. Then you go home and get packed while I make some arrangements. <laughs> Believe it or not, darling, we're going to be married by nothing less than a bishop. Kitty. Kitty, I know what you're thinking, but I can't give him up. I won't give him up. I'm going to marry him and devote the rest of my life to making him happy. Yes? And where are you going to hide? Hide? Where can you live with him where you won't be afraid of someone stopping you to say, Hello, Myra, what love? Oh, I don't care, Kitty. I've got a right to live and I'm going to take it. I wasn't thinking of you, Myra. I was thinking of Roy. Roy? His family, his career. Do you think it's fair to him? But, but I love him. Oh, Myra, darling, I'd rather see you happy than anything in the world. But could you bear to see his love turning to hate? Could you face him as his eyes cursed the day he met you? Myra, why are you staring at me? Thank you, Kitty. Myra, where are you going? Oh, I've got to think. I want to be sure. Bad night, ain't it? Fog's as thick as pea soup beyond the bridge. Blimey, that river sure looks uninviting tonight, don't it? Yes. There's a train in at nine, going down to the station. No. Well, I'll go up on my lonesome then. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Well, now you can stop being frightened. It's a wonderful institution, the underground. All clear. All clear. Uh, how about All having clear. supper with me? At the candlelight club. Will this table do, sir? It makes it possible for two people to meet, to look into each other's eyes, and to know in that instant that they are in love. Ladies and gentlemen, the last dance, the farewell walk. Oh, I, I never was so sure of anything in my life. I must never let you go again. You know, Madam Colonel, we shall dismiss you without notice. I'll be all right. You mustn't worry about me, because I'm coming back. I'm getting scared. Why don't you write, Roy, and tell him we're broke? Roll of honor, killed in action. Roll of honor, killed in action. Killed in action, Cronin Roy. Call this 
number and ask for Myra. I'm not going to let you out of my sight. Not till we're married, you understand? Well, well, well. Hello, Myra. Busy tonight? You're never going to cry again. Except with happiness. We'll be married at St. Matthews. And I'll never leave you. Could you face him if he cursed the day he met you? Darling, darling, what is it? Tell me, is there someone else? Could you bear to see his love turning to hate? Is there someone else? I was thinking of Roy, his family, his career. Is there someone else? No! No, I've never loved anyone else. I never shall. That's the truth, Roy. I love you. I love you. Yes, Thomas. Your train, sir. You've only 15 minutes to make it, sir. Only 15 minutes, then? Eh? Yes, sir. You've been standing there at the railing for nearly an hour, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I was just dreaming, Thomas. Remembering another war. And an old love story. Oh, well, Thomas. There's still some work to be done. For a little while. The Waterloo Station. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, with the Gulf Stream Guild Theatre's production of Waterloo Bridge. From the applause, there's no doubt that the audience here in the theatre loved it every bit as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And we're happy, too, that we were able to present Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern in their first broadcast together. As you know, their performance and the performances of all the stars who appear here in the Gulf Theatre are donated. And in return, Gulf gives generously to the Motion Picture Relief Fund to help in the great work of building a home to provide for workers in the picture industry who can no longer provide for themselves. Once in a decade, a story comes along that is so beautiful it becomes an overnight sensation as a novel... And the hit of the year is a motion picture. Just such a story as the one we're bringing you next week. Lloyd C. Douglas's great love story, The Magnificent Obsession. The stars, two of the greatest names in motion pictures. Myrna Loy and Don Amici. So be sure to listen next week when Gulf brings you Don Amici and Myrna Loy in The Magnificent Obsession. Until then, this is Roger Pryor saying good night, everyone, for your neighborhood good Gulf dealer. forget, you have a date here in the Gulf Theater next Sunday night when we present Myrna Loy and Don Amici in Magnificent Obsession. Brian Ahern will soon be seen in the Universal production, The Man Who Lost Himself. Joan Fontaine is about to begin working on Alfred Hitchcock's before the fact. But he's still speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.